all right guys people are always complaining how youtubers only ever talk about gear and they never like actually do anything creative yada 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 well this video here isn't about gear at all this is more about how i come up with film ideas and i get out there and i shoot it on the spot with zero planning almost zero script and let me just say a lot of times when i put out videos like this right when the short film starts all of a sudden the views drop off. So let me just ask you this. Do you think YouTubers are at fault for only talking about gear or do you think it's some of you viewers who are the issue? So my challenge to you, once the short film starts playing, don't just click off. Maybe give it a chance, put it on 2x speed. Maybe you just might like the footage. Maybe you might get something out of it. I don't know. But right after the short film, we'll go over all of like the actual theory, full BTS. Like I take you guys on the whole trip with me on how I shot it and planned it and all that. So well, let's just get rolling here. Well... to talk about it now that i'm full-time on youtube i asked you guys what the hell you want to see and a lot of you said you guys want to see the process and how i come up with videos well dzo loaned me their pavo anamorphics last minute i literally just got my hands on them a few hours ago the past two films we did were in the woods and i was like i want to do the woods again well <laughs> we're in the woods again i had asked jericho and he brought up there's river beds maybe someone exploring with like a headlamp or flashlight so that sparked this idea of what if I'm out here and it looks like I'm trying to hunt. I come up here and I get all my tactical gear on. And then say I'm at like a payphone booth thing and I'm like, whatever. You guys will see. I'm putting it together as we go though. So this is how it works. All right guys, this is gonna be my first look. And then it's gonna cut to like super cinematic footage of me getting my tactical gear on and then me in the river. And A lot of people say that they struggle on finding ideas and getting inspiration. All I can say to that is you need to have vision. I would start off by maybe breaking down your top three films and seeing what about those that you like, about the story, about the pacing, about the cuts, the color grading, the lighting, all of it. Break down what about those films like really gravitate to your 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 eye and your, your vision. For me, No Country for Old Men is one of my top favorite films. So as I start doing more of these narrative pieces, even just these little ones that's to, for testing gear pretty much, you guys will see a common theme play out that kind of resembles that. I just saw the creator and it's probably top three films for me already. And it all kind of evolves in like the type of world that I would love to immerse myself in, the type of films I want to see. So here's the trick. The edit's already in my brain. Even like from shot to shot, I kind of have an idea of how I want it to be. How is it already in my head? Just from watching so many damn movies, studying what I like and preparing myself. If you aren't confident in that way, you need to go obsessed about your favorite films, watch them obsessively and break them down on like what about them you love so much. Practice. Cam said he has the edit in his head 
from watching stuff, but like doing it a couple of times helps so much. Like just do it a couple times shitty and then you start seeing the the edits, you start visualizing yeah. it. You're a creative person. Start visualizing it. Start practicing that just in your brain alone. Just telling stories, even if they're just goofy stories that you're never gonna tell anybody. Start playing those in your brain. All right guys, so our game plan is changing a little bit because our moon's actually not out that much, as much as I thought it was gonna be out tonight. Jericho and I are bouncing ideas off each other. I wanted all of the first scenes, like the hunter, you know, on a spec kind of thing. I wanted that to be more like from, uh, like from far away. Like you're watching me watching someone. And so I wanted to be a little bit more in the distance. Tactical part comes up. I want that to be more immersive. So we're gonna go 40 millimeters or wider on that. A lot of this isn't going to plan, but again, it's usually five hours ago, I hit you up, it's like, hey, let's film this. It's way too dark. We're gonna go for it anyways though and see what we can get. In my brain, I'm imagining a shot that pans up or tilts up, I should say before you freaking crazy people get mad at that. For the, the flashlight sitting in the water, I have my gun and I'm hunting it down. We break the 180 rule just because it. The camera's behind me. I'm going through it. It cuts to a wide, and you just see a flashlight lighting up the river. I have zero knowledge of tactical stuff, so <laughs> we'll see if this looks stupid. I'm sure anybody who knows about the stuff's gonna call me out on it. As you guys can see, all that is in my brain. All of the, the sh I just said, those are all ideas. Just I'm playing the edit in my mind. Jericho's worked with me enough to where I know what you're going for and we have similar styles in terms of like how uh, uh, the cinematography plays out and I know what movies you're talking about yeah yeah like I know we're, we're imitating some Sicario type shit right <laughs> yeah. now did that I even say Sicario? no you didn't uh, but see, I know that's what see? you're talking about yeah it all just comes down to having a vision that's literally all it is even when it comes to like color grading people are like how do you get your colors? it's just those colors are baked in my brain like I have so many visual reference baked in my brain of other films of skin tones even People ask me how I get my skin tones. It's literally just baked in my brain on where skin tones should land. So right now, Jericho has zero clue. Tell him to get in the front seat. He doesn't know what my actions are gonna be yet, so you're gonna see what I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna throw these seats down, and I'm gonna move it, and then that's where I'm gonna bring out the tactical gun, and I'm gonna throw on the vest and all that. Two actions before I do my action. So now we gotta figure out lighting though. I might motivate some red lights, like brake lights behind me. All right, guys, I gotta put this down. This is the lighting. I'm just motivating the tail lights with uh, this Pavo. Pavo tubes for night shoots are insane. So this just giving us a soft blue little kicker. A trick when you're doing stuff like this, as long as you backlight, your shit's gonna look cinematic. It's literally that simple. If you're stuck in a situation where your light's uncontrolled, try to backlight as much as you can, try to shape the light, just do whatever you can. Since we're making this up as we go, we're having to do playback and I'm kind of redoing the edit in my brain so we can add a little bits into it. So as we go, it's all starting to get pieced together. And again, this is all just like, I haven't done too much narrative work, but I just, I've obsessed about doing narrow work for a while, so it's still kind of, you know, burned in my brain. We're gonna do three more shots. Close up of me grabbing the vest. Low angle shot of me throwing the vest on. We already have a tight of me checking if there's a round in the gun, but it's really tight, which might work, but I wanna get a safety one of a medium where some of the vest is in there as well. And then we'll go to a wide of me shutting it, and then it's gonna cut to the river. The last scene on this location, we're gonna do a river scenes. I'm gonna go get my boots wet. We got a Pavo tube with us, flashlight's gonna be in hand. That's the only way you're gonna be able to read anything out here. You guys can see, you can't see it. There's more light in the sky that way. So hopefully the 12,800 with the T2.1 will read. We'll see. Jericho made me do a few takes, and I am just... I'm staying at my family tonight because I got a doctor's appointment on the res out here. I only brought one pair of boots, so... That's all you brought? We're gonna try to get a few creative shots. We have no light. Yeah. I have no idea how this is gonna look in post. It looks sick from the back of the camera, though, but yeah. it's dark. <laughs> I was trying to, like, you know, add some diffusion. <laughs> uh, I want to get a shot with the gun underneath the FX6 with the flashlight like a perspective down the barrel. Jericho had a good idea, because I was like, I don't know how we're gonna end this. He goes, what if you just like bust in your room? And you're like, I've been looking for the best anamorphics. 
stupid, but it's... So we finished the shoot. My acting part was really bad. <laughs> we got most of it done. Visually, we got most of the stuff done. And again, none of this was planned. We're just kind of winging it. Hopefully me kind of putting down my own walls and just letting some of my horrible stuff out there kind of inspires you just to try and work it for yourself. As we're on day two on this, Jericho and I filmed speaking parts and they were pure garbage. I didn't have the <laughs> right idea and I was trying to come up with the script on the spot and it was really bad. No one will ever see that footage. <laughs> now I'm out here with the homie Luis. I wrote some stuff out, thought about more, especially after I did the edit. This should be way better. Again, this isn't anything I'm gonna be submitting to Sundance or anything, but we're gonna have some fun with it. We uh, used the FX6 for the first part of the film. Now we're still on the Red Komodo X, which is a 1.3X crop, but we're gonna be using the internal anamorphic mode. So overall, it's probably gonna be a better shooting experience because the FX6, though it does have 2X D-stretch in camera now, it doesn't crop the sensor out. It just gives you the full 16 by nine uh, crop, which is really annoying. So this is gonna be a better experience overall. I was trying to knock it out all in one day, but the idea kind of wasn't really coming together. So once I was able to go back and kind of look at the footage, I got more of an idea of how to write out the rest of it. Basically what we're doing here, it's a puzzle thing. And again, it all comes back to just studying films and being obsessed and having a vision and having a vibe and knowing what that vibe is. When it comes to filming all these type of things, again, you can have it on your head. Like the, my shot list on here is literally just written out. I don't know if you guys can see us on the phone. It's very simply just written out. No crazy descriptions of what the shots are because they're all in my head. And Luis is a great filmmaker too and a photographer. And so I'll easily be able just to translate this to him and he'll be able to pick it up similar how it was with Jericho. The 40, the 75, and either the 28 or the 32. Mm, so well, I kind of want to see what all this do. Little trick, Luis and I were just talking about this. We don't have a budget, we don't have a lot of time. I just came up with this idea very last minute. I was up late, just like, okay, how can I finish this video? The simplest way to like cheat stuff like this is just, you know, kind of leave it a mystery and let the audience kind of put together its own picture. So we're being kind of vague on what's happening in this. We're being kind of vague on the whole plot. Like, what did I find? Did I find anything? Did I even engage anything? This is just us coming out here to have fun get creative, check out new lenses and gear and just, you know, practice. Any little bit and time that you can dedicate to just something as fun and silly as this, you're still learning as a filmmaker, you're still growing. DJI, make some freaking uh, uh, waterproof ones. Waterproof, sweatproof. Waterproof, something <laughs> helps. See this white Kel Yeah, hey, bro, legs. you need to get out more, jeez. Jeez, man, why don't you hire me more, yeah? <laughs> what's, what's cool about this shot is your, um, your legs are acting as a fill light. <laughs> Fuck you. I'll say this off the bat. I'm the type of person where I started getting into filmmaking when like the Black Magic Pocket 4K came out. I used to use the Canon T2i to like make little videos and stuff. So to me, anytime any new products come out, I think they're amazing because I come from a, a time and a place where we're spoiled now. All these lenses are amazing, but they all have different characteristics and different form factors. They're different tools for different people.